Today we are going to be learning chapter 2 how animals find their food. In this chapter we are going to be learning the different ways in which different animals find their food, the difference between herbivores and carnivores and the different adaptations to finding food when food is scarce. We all need food to eat and get nutrients and energy from it. How do you get your food? You go to the grocery store or the vegetable markets and get your food from there. Let's warm up a little. Tim is reading a book in his garden. He sees ants moving about. They are constantly on the move. Do you know why and where the ants are going? These ants are searching for food. We all need food to eat and get nutrients and energy from it. But how do we get this food? We go to the grocery store or the vegetables market and buy this food. Some people have vegetable gardens in their homes. Farmers not only grow crops but also raise animals for milk, eggs, etc. The pets in your home depend on you for their food. But what about the animals that are outside on their own? How do they find the food they need? Animals in the wild hunt for their food in the habitat they live in. Different animals need different kinds of food. Some animals are herbivores, that is they consume plant and plant products. Some animals are carnivores, that is they kill and eat other animals. Some animals eat both plants and animals, these are called omnivores. And some animals are insectivores, that is they consume insects. Different types of eating habits results in different ways of searching or finding for food. Unlike humans who grow the food they want, animals have to forage for their food. Forage means searching far and wide for food. Animals can forage for their food either alone or in groups. Some animals like the leopard or squirrel look for their food on their own. They are called solitary foragers. While some animals like deer and ants look for food in groups, they are called group foragers. Now let us think, which one is better, solitary foraging or group foraging? Both the foraging methods have their own benefits. When an animal forages alone, the food it finds is for its own consumption. It does not need to be shared. But when animals are in groups, the food has to be shared. If the food is scarce, all animals get less food. Moreover, the fastest and the healthiest animal of the group can grab more food than the other members of the group. Group foraging is good, especially for herbivores because they are alert to their surroundings and predators and they can escape very easily. Predators like wolves and lions are group foragers. They can hunt more efficiently when they are in a group they encircle their prey and do not allow them to escape. If you look at the food web and the food chain of a particular habitat, we can see how each animal finds its food. The ultimate source of all food is the plants. So, the plants are the primary producers of any food chain. Herbivores consume only plants and plant products. So, they are called the primary consumers. Herbivores consume the stems, roots, leaves, flowers and seeds of plants. Usually, they forage for food in large groups so that they can damage the plant growth of that area. Herbivores are the food of other predators who are the secondary consumers in the food chain. These animals feed by hunting and killing other animals as their prey. These are called carnivores. Carnivores hunt on other animals for their food. Small predators are eaten by large predators. In any given habitat, the herbivores forage for plants and the carnivores forage for animals. To get food successfully, an animal has to adapt to the surroundings. Animals that live in forests have different ways of finding food when compared to an animal that lives in a desert. Animals have adapted themselves to their surroundings according to how much and what kind of food is available. Look at the tall giraffes. 
The long necks help them to reach the leaves of very tall trees. Elephants use their trunks to tear the fruits and branches of the trees or pick up the whole sugarcane from the ground. They use the trunks to drink water. The reindeer, which lives in very cold areas, have a very sensitive nose which can smell the grass and small plants covered by snow. Let's explore. Look at the animals in your surroundings and find out where they belong in the food chain. Also find out if they are solitary foragers or group foragers. Do they have any special adaptations to finding food? Discuss it in class. Herbivores eat by grazing on plants or plucking the plant parts. Carnivores and insectivores have to hunt for their food. Animals like cat, tiger, wolf, birds, etc. have to first spot and then capture their prey. For this, they often have to chase their prey. Cheetahs are the fastest animals on land. But to chase their prey, they have to be fit because antelopes and gazelles are also equally fast. Here's a tidbit. Animals use camouflage to hide from other animals. Both the predators and the prey use camouflage. Frogs are green so that they can hide from other insects in the green plants. But not all carnivores chase their prey. Some sit still and quiet and capture their prey. For example, look at a frog. It stays at one spot for a very long time and is still. But when an insect passes by it, it quickly captures it with its long sticky tongue. Migrating animals Some animals stay in the same place throughout the year because they get their food from their habitat. Whereas some animals migrate to another place in search of food and they are called migrating animals. These animals have to migrate to another place in search of their food. The deer, antelope, etc. graze on grass or other small plants. We see them ruminating whenever we see them in a forest. They are group foragers and also keep moving from one place to another. Bees first graze in one area and when they have eaten as much as they can, in that area they move to another area. This gives the previous area the time to allow the new grass and plants to regrow. Migration from one jungle to another or between grasslands is done by many animals. This type of behavior is also shown by carnivores. They travel or stop according to the availability of food. In some areas, the food becomes scarce in winter months. Many animals in these areas tend to hibernate. Hibernation is the inactivity or dormancy of the body. The body slows down all its internal processes to use less energy. Less energy means less need for food. For an animal hibernates, it feeds or actually gorges on all the food available. This food turns into fat in the body. Some animals store food in their bodies while some store in their homes. When an animal goes into hibernation, they usually sleep in a protected area. Some animals sleep for the whole time and others wake up for some time to eat the stored food and then go back to sleep. In this manner, animals can survive the severe cold winter months when food is very scarce and the temperatures are low. Snakes, bears, bats, etc. are hibernating animals. Some animals, instead of moving to another area when food becomes scarce, stay in the same place. These animals collect or hoard food to survive the lean months. Squirrels Squirrels store food in hollow trees and under the ground. They hoard large store or scatter single nuts all over the place. They have an efficient food detection technique that allows them to find caches of nuts buried in deep in the soil. Crocodiles Crocodiles can survive for long periods without food. They often store it in submerged holes dug deep into the river banks. This doesn't only store the food, it also softens the flesh, making it possible for the crocs to tear off 
and swallow chunks of it easily. Leopards Leopards can climb trees after hunting day, so it stores it on the forks of large trees. This way, other predators cannot reach and consume the dead animal. They reposit the tree over the next few days or weeks to consume the animal. Did you know a snail can sleep for three years together? Signs top up. Some animals sleep in the day and are up during the night time. These animals are called nocturnal animals. They are adapted in the night time and can see clearly during the night. Some examples are rodents, cats and owls. Animals like squirrels hoard food. Hoard means collecting and accumulating food. Camouflage. Camouflage is an adaptation where animals can blend with its surroundings so that other animals cannot see them. Here's the glossary of our chapter. Hoard. Hoard means collecting and accumulating things. Camouflage. It is an adaptation in which the animal can blend itself to its surroundings so that other animals cannot see it. Here's a mind map for you. Living things are of two types, producers and consumers. Producers, plants. Consumers, animals. Animals have primary producers and secondary consumers, solitary forage and group forage. Primary producers graze, secondary consumers hunt. Lack of food. Lack of food results in animal either migrating, hibernating or hoarding. 